Hey everyone, the sun is going down, but tonight we're not actually gonna go photograph a sunset. We're gonna wait a little bit until the stars come out and we're gonna do some astrophotography at Letchworth State Park. So here we go. Yeah, not sure if you could see that, but um, there were like thousands of geese flying around. And today is actually the, f the last official day of winter. And tomorrow is the first official day of spring. And I just thought that was kind of a fitting thing to see the geese migrating back, uh, back home for the warmer weather. Kind of cool. So even though we're going to take some star photos, there's still pretty stuff to see along the way. All right, onwards. To the park, to Letchworth State Park. Yeah. Just kidding, we're going home. No, I'm just kidding, we're not. Okay, so we made it to the park, and it's still not dark enough to take photos of stars. So instead, I thought I would just give you a quick rundown on some tips and tricks for astrophotography. The number one thing for astrophotography is you want to get away from light pollution. And basically light pollution is any sort of light source that's man-made from villages or towns or cities. You want to get as far away from that as possible. The reason being is it blocks out the night sky. If you've ever been in an area where it's super dark and you can see the night sky but you happen to see like an orange glow on the horizon or off in the distance, that's light pollution. So number one, get away from light pollution. It's the worst. Number two, you want to shoot when there's either a new moon or the phase of the moon is close enough to a new moon where it's not going to be putting off light because just like light pollution, it's going to be washing out the sky. So tonight, the moon is like this little sliver in the sky and it's going to be setting in about an hour and a half or two hours. As you can see here, the moon is, is just not bright enough to put off enough light to ruin a nighttime exposure. Number three. And this one's pretty obvious, you need a tripod. These are long exposures that we'll be dealing with between 10 and 30 seconds or longer if you wanna do star trails. So you need your camera to be steady and on a tripod. And number four, have fun. <laughs> no, I don't know what number four is. I don't have a number four. Let me think here. No. All right, I'm gonna go park it somewhere in the park and then uh, we're just going to wait for it to get dark enough for the stars to come out and to start shooting. So it's finally dark enough to do some astrophotography. Now let me turn the heater off here in the car. It's really cold out. It's about 20 degrees in the middle of March. I mean, shouldn't it be getting warmer by now? Anyways, um, as you can see from this angle, like I was talking about earlier, you can start to see some stars uh, with longer exposures, but the light pollution near the horizon from the nearby towns is really washing out the night sky. So we're gonna move to an area where there's not as much light pollution and you'll see what a difference that makes. Ah. Oh. Well, that's a bummer. Guess we're not going to the spot I wanted to go to, which was the trestle. See if we can find somewhere else then. That was a bummer. So, the spot that I usually go to for star photography in the park, the trestle, it's like a really cool bridge um, that's silhouetted with the night sky behind it. It's blocked off right now. So um, I'm not even gonna try. It's blocked off for a reason, and I guess we're just gonna have to find something else to photograph. And the part of the park that I'm in right now faces east, and that's where a lot of the light pollution was coming from. 
So I'm just gonna keep shooting and see if I find something else. But sometimes that's what you get when you go on these things. Uh, sometimes you don't come back with what you're looking for. All right, let's see what we can get here. In the truck here spent about an hour outside uh, trying to get some star photos my original plan was to go down to that iconic bridge um, which I've been to several times uh, at night to get some star photos but as you saw tonight the road to the trestle was blocked off and I'm not sure why but you know still a very beautiful night here uh, very cold very crisp I do recommend winter over summertime stargazing. I know it's a little bit colder, but you tend to get the clearest nights in the winter. So just throw on an extra layer um, and go out maybe late winter, early spring, and you can get those really crisp and clear nights. So other than that, um, I am going to go home and warm up because I'm pretty cold. And so I will see you all next time.